Welcome to the first in the series, Sacred Spaces, a look at faith-based groups in Barbados. Orisha is one of the many African traditional religions. Its deities are known as Orishas. Priest Dr. Derek Murray shared more about the faith with me at his office at the Center for Hybrid Studies in the city. Most people will tell you that the, the trajectory for an Orisha initiate or follower or priest is to develop something called Iwa Pele, which means gentle character. So the whole idea is that you are supposed to be, as you mature, as you develop spiritually and so on, you're supposed to be balanced enough to avoid extremes, to, um, to be peaceful, to have your gentle character, right? Um, but also there is the idea that, um, that you have a particular destiny to fulfill. You, before you were born, you make an agreement with, with God that this is what you will be in this life. But you forget during the birthing process, when you actually arrive here on earth, you forget. And so throughout your life, your engagement with priests, with um, divination with, and so on, is supposed to nudge you onto your, your path because you will drift off. And all of that, and the, all the ceremonies and so on, is supposed to keep you, um, uh, so you fulfill your destiny. I would say from about the mid-90s or so, the tradition started to catch on here. Um, so our first awareness of it, in terms of actual, some, someone who was actually initiated and practicing, would have been Robert Warner. Um, at the time, and his, um, that's the name he was carrying at the time. He has, um, we refer to him now as Agba, as an elder in the tradition, and he has his Orisha name that he would use now. Um, and so a Pinus Creative Workshop at the time was very much engaged with exploring um, Caribbean folk, Barbados folk, Caribbean folk, which included the spiritual cultural work and so we started to learn and play a lot of Trinidadian Orisha rhythms, the Orisha songs and the dances that went with them. Um, if you know anything about Pinelands you would know that um, research comes first. So if you're doing a dance you have to do the correct rhythms, you have to um, have the correct costume, you have to have the correct ceremony and rituals that goes with it. Uh, so that um, is where the interest really started in terms of Orisha. Um, I should say that Orisha is just one of the several African traditional religions. And uh, remember that when we were forcibly brought over here um, ensla and enslaved, that we came from different ethnic groups in West Africa, um, some as far as the, um, Central Africa. Um, and those different groups first had to figure out how to survive. And for any peoples, especially African peoples, spirituality is crucial for survival. And so the uh, first thing they had to do is to work out how do we forge um, our, our, our spiritual tradition in this hemisphere uh, based on what we know and combining what somebody who's Igbo knows with somebody who's Yoruba, with somebody who's Akan, and uh, how do we forge and put together um, traditions. So of course in different locations the traditions survived and have different manifestations. So in Trinidad you have Shango, but Shango is one name of one Orisha, one deity, that they generally refer to the entire tradition by, but it's really an Orisha tradition. Um, in Cuba, you have Lukumi, Nago, um, you have Palo, you have different manifestations in Haiti, um, in, and then in the other islands you have manifestations, but they may not necessarily carry the name. 
So apart from these manifestations, you also have a spectrum. So you have a spectrum that you can imagine as some are closer to Christianity and some are closer to the original African tradition. So for example, spiritual Baptist, which uses the Bible, is closer to, um, to Christianity, even though many of the ceremonies and so on are, are, are clearly African origin. So one of the Orishas in the Pantheon is called Ochosi, right? Some people say Ochosi. But he, he is a hunter. Um, he's also a surgeon. Um, he is responsible for going and hunting and bringing back food to the community. And he's also responsible for things like the police, justice, um, hospitals, actually anywhere where you can lose your freedom. The Orisha itself is seated in your head. That's why they say crown. So these, if you can think of Orisha as a force of nature or type of consciousness, and this consciousness is then seated in your head. And so that as you, as you mature with that Orisha, you then begin to take on more and more the characteristics of that particular Orisha. Um, and so there are many things about Ochoasi that I, I actually do see in myself. Um, but one that always amuses me is that because he's a hunter, it means that a part, a part of what he has to master is walking quietly, right? If you're stalking animals and so on. So it always amuses me when I walk into a room. What I think is normal, um, stamping feet and all that. And then people turn around and say, but well, you don't warn us, you're always sneaking up and creeping up on on me, and so they jump, you know, and, and I, I've seen it long, happen often enough and long enough to know that that happens when, when Ocho sees close by. If you had to ask me one of the, the, the most important um, reasons I'm, I'm, I might take away from African, West African traditions, or indigenous African traditions, it is that when you have traditions that insist on absolute exclusivity and insist that their God is the only God, and there's only, not only that their God is the only God, because theoretically we could all agree, we may be able to all agree that there's one God. Let's say that we all agree. They also insist that there's only one path to that God, right, and to that spirituality. And inevitably, it leads to wars. If you really want to be not just tolerant, but, but inclusive without feigning intolerance, being inclusive is saying, as, as it stands, saying, and since I am not God Almighty, and since by admission we all say that he or she moves in mysterious ways, it is quite possible that what you're doing over there, unless you're killing people and so on, what you're doing over there is one of the paths. And I will acknowledge and, and give you all your rights and privileges and so on as a human being following a path that may or may not lead to God, but seeing as how I personally am not God, um, that's not for me to judge. So this, um, the red and black would be, these are Oleg, Olegba's beads. Um, those are his colors, red and black. Ogun. Um, Oya. 
Yemaya, Kobatala, Shango, Koshosi, Koshun, Orula. No, they were one. So this would be Obuns. And uh, this would be Shango's. Joycelyn Allen Brown has been a member for three years. Mrs. Allen Brown shares her perspective of the Orisha faith. I'm not crowned to an Orisha as yet, but I do have a, a, a head Orisha, and she is Yemaya. So Yemaya, she is a beautiful mother. She is, she rules the the narrow part of the ocean where we would bathe and so on. She, oh, what can I tell you about Yemaya? She looks out for her children, I can tell you that. Um, if, if you have any, any like family issues and so on, you can afford to speak to her and she's always ready to give an answer, not an answer as how you would answer me, but you receive your answers. Our lives are focused upon self-improvement, self-discovery, making the world better than we found it. Things like this is what we concentrate on, knowing about ourselves, knowing about our environment. Because we would have come here, we would have found trees, we would have found the sea, we would have found all these things. And they are not here just because the Almighty had nothing else to do or nowhere else to put them. So I think that uh, that is so much of our, our work here to know not only about ourselves, but about our environment, what we can do to make it better for those coming, and how we can honor those that have been here. Wow, oh, she wake up. Wow, oh, Lord.